Okay, so here we are back again, and this time we're on the desktop. And what we want to do is have a desktop-like experience. And this is actually something that happens quite a bit in large enterprise uh, environments where they maybe have created apps and they still want to give that application like user experience by having people just click on a desktop icon as opposed to maybe a bookmark and a browser or whatever so if that comes up there it is possible so I'm going to launch the app that I've been using and showing the whole time during this uh, video and I'm gonna click on this icon which is a custom icon as you can see but watch what happens when I go ahead and I launch it it technically launches the Chrome browser in full screen and it brings my app with no nav bar. So I have a full desktop, full screen experience. So here's the application as you've seen it before. Um, you know, we'll just update it with a whole bunch of information so that we'll run through it so that you'll see that it's pretty much the same application and everything up until this point and I'm gonna update everything, boom. And so now everything's been updated. So you can see this is the same app. And if I uh, position my cursor up to the top, you'll notice that I can now get it out of full screen and then close down the app. Okay, so that's how you get out of the app. Now, if I were to pull up Chrome Desktop, and I'll just you know pull up Chrome rather, not Chrome Desktop, but Chrome on a desktop, and here I am in the Chrome experience. If you hit the F11 key on the keyboard, it will take you into full screen mode. See the F11 function thing. So it's the same thing there. And then I have to press this to get to a window so that I can hit and close out. So that's essentially what we're doing. But let's look behind the scenes or under the hood about what's going on here. So the first thing you need to do is you need to point it to Chrome and you need to launch Chrome. So you might want to figure out how do I find out where Chrome actually is on my desktop because you need the full path of, as to where that is. Now I have a icon on the desktop, I can right click and it still doesn't get me there. Then I can click over here and right click again and then I do get some properties. So if I open that, that's how I can find and get the path to Chrome. So copy out that in the quotes. So I'm gonna copy out of that, but I'm gonna cancel. And now I'm gonna open up uh, my Notepad++. This is the item from the previous video. And I'm gonna paste this in. So this is where my Chrome is. So if I go to start and I do, to do this run thing, but I guess I can't do it here. Maybe I can do it in the search box. Um, I have two monitors and unfortunately when I click this, it's, it's popping up over on the other screen. Um, and I wish there was Let's see, maybe I can do it this way. Yep, and that'll pop up a little dialog box. Okay, so I can drag this to the screen. Here we go. So I'm going to now paste this in here, and with any luck, it should start Chrome, okay? So we know it works. I've just tested it with the run. So now we know that we've got what we've got. Now, this is the application Chrome. And so an executable can take these things called parameters, just like the URL can take things that are called parameters. And so, one of the things that we can do in passing in the parameters, and I'm gonna go back to the properties of this, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna copy all of this out here. Let's delete this. So let's break this down and let's look at it. So everything up until this point here, you've seen before, okay? So let's make this full screen so it's a little bit easier to digest. So this, I showed you how to get that before. Now, the first parameter is this start in full screen. What that does is it says, when you launch Chrome, launch it in full screen mode. And that's how you get to that part. Now what you need to do is take it to like a bookmark, a very specific website or page. And so the now you pass in this other parameter called hyphen app equals, and then you put in that long parameter to, uh, prior, yeah, that long URL with the parameters uh, for your application. So skip at metadata, I set it explicitly to false just in case some functionality ever changes. And so the other thing you can do is the hide nav bar equals true. So you can get rid of that purple bar at the top. And that's what gives it that full screen, full desktop like experience. And so using the URL combination and using these parameters and using uh, you know a desktop shortcut, then that's how you go ahead and you provide this information in creating a desktop shortcut. So I am going to copy, uh, actually I think I still have it on a clipboard. I'm gonna do that again. So I'm gonna do new shortcut 
and I'm gonna paste everything in there, right? So that's the location of Chrome up until this point. Now I've got the dash dash start. I'm towards the end here. So start full screen and then the dash app. And then all of that information is in there with the parameters. I'm gonna click next, give it a name. We're just gonna call it my app, right? And boom, now all of a sudden I have the icon that says my app. And you're like, well, why doesn't that look like what you have? So I go back to the properties and so I can use this change icon. And so there's a bunch of icons here for Chrome. If you delete it and then just hit enter, it brings up the system shell for Windows. And you can pick from one of these icons if you so chose. Or if you have icons downloaded under pictures, icons, I have some. And so what I did is I chose this pen icon because I have the pen icon for the app in the icon uh, in Power Apps. And so that's how I was able to actually create it with that, that custom icon. So now that I have this information about the shortcut, I can take that, I can put it in distributed, typically in most of the uh, desktop distributed applications, and now they can install and push out this application icon to everybody and it'll launch up into the app. So in this video, I showed you how to do that. I'm gonna show you one last interesting video uh, where we are going to go into that make that Power Apps experience. So let me just remove all of this other stuff because all I actually need is my app, okay? So let's load up the app the way that it is here because I want to show you one other thing. All right, do you see this box over here? It says example param. Example param wasn't specified. So because this is all about parameters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this out and I'm going to tack on to the end of this that uh, parameter. And so because I'm adding a parameter, I'm going to use the ampersand, right? If it was the first one, I would use a question mark, which is how the tenant ID is specified over here. See, that's the question mark. Well, don't worry about it. Just remember the ampersand, because that's really all you have to do. And now if I put an example param, so I'm saying and this parameter equals, and now I need to give it a value, right? So I'll put this uh, my video value, right? And I'm using the spaces in here. Now, if I wanted to do what's called URL encoding, I could do that. Uh, and it's probably a good idea that you do do it, but there's a website out there. Just go to search in Google URL encode, URL decode. Well, all you wanna do is take the parameter value and do an encode. And what'll happen is it'll do percent 20, which is what you would have for a space and percent, whoops, percent 20 for a space there. And so now when I do that and I hit enter, Power Apps has been programmed to read that parameter from the URL, right? And so here's the thing, here's what's interesting. It could be an interest, it could be an integer, it could be a text value like I just had, it could be something Boolean. And so in my application start event, if I check for the parameters, being set or not blank, and if the value is so-and-so, I can do deep linking. I can send it to a very particular page, a very particular screen. I could go so far as to make sure that even if people get it, that people that aren't in a particular group in Azure Active Directory or internally I build up a, a users group and check the user.email and all of that other stuff, these parameters can be used in really, really great and interesting ways to make your applications more robust. So that is it for this last video uh, in regards to the application. We're gonna show you in the next video, uh, our very final video in the series for October, 2021, where we're gonna talk about application analytics. So that's it for this one. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.